Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space World 1.12. Sorry for the long delay in episodes, I was otherwise sidetracked as usual. Uh, but we are back on it and in the last video I had failed to launch this Kerbin station, well not exactly this, uh, a different version of this into low Kerbin orbit and we were just shy of the Delta V that we needed and it exploded in the atmosphere and everything. Uh, so what I've done is I added this tank here this bastard fuel tank so now we'll have extra delta v i didn't think that we needed extra boosters because actually our liftoff thrust weight ratio is 1.78 so that's pretty good and that's with this extra tank so that's already pretty good uh since it's getting a little bit tall i actually added a shorter tank here originally we had two of these prometheus 2 1960 liquid fuel tanks now we have one of those and one 1200 uh liquid fuel tank so a little bit less fuel down here, but that's more than made up for by that tank there, I hope. I think so, yep. Uh, so we should have e enough extra delta V to get to orbit. Um, my, maybe we should undersupply this a little bit though, just in case. Yeah, I mean, we don't need to bring up everything all at once. We could have some of the other missions that arrive bring some of the supplies up. Let's see, this delta V reading isn't quite right, that's part of our problem. If I move it up there, we sort of get a better sense of things. That's sea level, let's go vacuum. So it's 5,248 in vacuum right now. And... Well, I guess it's a little bit. I mean, I guess we can bring up the rest later. We'll just half fill it. Supply vessels ought to be a thing after all. Okay, well, hopefully that'll be enough. It's a little bit tall and ungainly. Hopefully it can control itself. Let's give it a go. Okay, well, we just have to get to low Kerbin orbit. And we'll light the liquid engines first. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. And off we go. Mechjeb is still not working. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why this is. It seemed to stop working when we unlocked stuff. So the process of unlocking things seems to have totally messed it up. Okay, booster set. Alright, still good on thrust weight ratio. I mean, we should make it and everything. Okay, let's not get things out of whack here. We also want to deorbit de the fairing. So, 100 we find, we'll coast and separate the fairing. We've got tiny little RCS thrusters here. Not a whole lot, but enough. Well, we certainly want to make sure that we're going to have comms. In fact, I think I'll take the liberty of starting the for now engine malfunctioned we can still repair it well great um it's fine <laughs> we'll go into a higher orbit considering the engine malfunction it's better to keep this thing safe than to be picky about the orbit. Okay, well, for now. That's not safe yet, but it'll give us our time and what we need in order to get it to safety. Only 80 electric charge, though. I messed up on that. I'm so used to the realism overhaul cabins having an obscene amount of electric charge that I never put batteries on things. Because basically, realism overhaul negates any need to add batteries to things most of the time, so yeah. We really need more electric charge, but anyway, especially for the science lab. Okay, let's keep it to low thrust, and you know, that's good enough. 236. Include a cupola was optional, but let's change the vessel type. Probe core, 
configure vessel naming. Well, if you say so. Kerbin Station, accept. All right, we fulfilled the contract. It's a bit troublesome, but we made it. Okay, solar panels are out, but we are on the dark side. Once there are occupants, though, you'll be using electric charge on this side, and yeah, 80 won't be good enough. We'll have to attach more things, but that just gives us stuff to do with our space station. We need to replace docking ports with bigger ones once we get those. We need to have more power, and, you know, the Kerbals can just slap on batteries. And we can get rid of those engines, probably. I mean, this could be a spacefaring vessel to other locations, too. I mean, there's nothing stopping it. Okay. All right. So let's see about the contracts now. Hopefully that unlocks some space station related contracts. Okay, bases and stations. Send a crew to Kerbin Station. Well, I mean, that should be doable. At least four, though. We don't exactly have a convenient pod to get four to the station, I don't think. Now, of course, the logical thing would just be to launch two of our LEO pods separately and just end up with four Kerbals on the station in two launches. But the problem is, the way that the contract is worded, it seems like we need to launch a vessel with four crew and dock that to the station. So I don't know for sure if it's going to be satisfied with two separate vessels with two crew each. Otherwise, of course, it'd be trivial to launch this. So what I'm thinking is we're still going to have the Leo be our main pod because uh, we haven't tested re-entry with anything with more Kerbals and like the Salamander is just heavier, still has two crew. And I wish I could sort my crew here. There's not that many pods around here. This is a Mark II command module, also two crew. I think everything has two crew. We don't have the Mark 1-3 pod which carries three. So I don't think we have any pod that can carry three anyway. So we'll just end up... And then there's this expansion module for the Leo. That can carry an extra one, which is sort of awkward. Uh, so we could have a Leo with three. I guess. This has potential, that's a resupply pod. But we need four, so I don't know if that little crew module that adds one would be the best thing. So anyway, I have to cook something up, but probably we'll be sending four up at once, but bringing them back down separately. Okay, so here's what I've cooked up, but it occurs to me belatedly that we don't really have that many Kerbals to work with. Uh, we've only got seven total right now, and using four of them on a mission is rather dubious. Uh, well, I've got them loaded in, but I'm not thrilled about it. We've got Jeb, Bob, I figure we should send a scientist to the science lab. Uh, Bill, who can take some of these batteries off and place them on the station, and then Dudebus, who's a farmer. But, yeah, four Kerbals, hmm. Anyway, we'll deal with that though. And what we have is basically two Leo pods, because I sure don't want to have a situation where we can't bring some of them back. So we might as well make sure that we can bring all of them back. And so we have two Leo pods, and they each have a tiny Oscar B fuel tank and two ant engines in order to serve as their return package. Though they also have RCS and their internal RCS. A fuel, the 15 mod propellant, which could also be used to deorbit them. And though not from the high height that the station is now in, maybe you want to bring that down. They've got docking ports on either side to allow for this sort of chain thing. And two parachutes instead of just the one on the top. I hope those parachutes will be safe. We've got some solar panels, just mini solar panels here and hopefully that'll be enough. It seemed to be in the Kerbalism dialogue. I mean, it says consumed is only 0.144. We also have these solar panels right now, but checking just with those small ones, it seemed to be enough. But of course, there's the nighttime side, but we do have the battery packs for now. Um, yeah, I probably want even more batteries, but we've got th these solar panels. We'll see how it works out. Uh, we've got RC, we've got mod propellant down here and RCS around the center line here, so this could do all the docking if necessary. 
and we've got this engine I haven't used much before. This is a Prometheus Lelantos A liquid engine, and of course it seems to be the upper stage engine of the Titan rocket, which suits me fine. Uh, it is an LR-91, and we just have a small fuel tank for that. That doesn't supply much, it's just to finish up orbit. And then we have, uh, that's a balloon tank there. Got two balloon tanks, but then we ended up with uh, Prometheus tanks so we could attach boosters. And this gives us plenty of extra Delta V. We've got 5,757. It's sort of including one of the little Oscar refuel tank packs, so subtract that 200 out. But yeah, the thrust weight ratio, of course, we're not launching with that. It's more like if we're like this. And so 1.47, uh, 1.36 at sea level, fairly mild. And Delta V is not a problem, but you know, we have potential issues. There's always the failure issue and all that business. Who knows? Launch escape isn't great especially considering we're carrying four people but again I'd rather not carry four people but I'm just wondering about the contours of the contract if you will the actual requirements it seems like we need to send up four so it is with great trepidation that we are going to launch this and hope for the best we don't have any shielding on we should be below the radiation belts and everything. So we did put some extra food, water, and oxygen. Um, on the way back down, we'll only keep what's in the pod, and we'll transfer any excess into the station. Okay, that should be good. All right, here we go, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. All right. Four Kerbals. You're really asking for it once you increase the number of Kerbals you put on your rocket. Okay, booster set. We probably don't need these solar panels on the side of that stage, but I decided to be safe on that. Looks like we have 1500 in the upper stage, and I was expecting less, but this is good. And we should be able to make orbit with that stage now, if this one happens to have a last minute problem. Okay, separation and ignition. I forgot to check whether this had multiple burns. It does have. Not a whole lot, just three ignitions. Oh, well that's way high. And it's got a tail off. I didn't want to go way high. We actually went above the station's orbit there. Well, we'll take that real burn for now and then fix it up. That's a much nicer proposition right there. Oh, we should have... Oh, yeah, let's get rid of the nose cone. That'll deorbit because we've still got low periapsis. Undock. Okay. Okay. And ignition. But we have that huge trail off with it. Oh, the, the nose cone came back. Whoops. Yeah, that would happen. Should have let it go in a different direction. I think I'd rather do this correction with mod propellant and then do the final burn with the main engine since this one only has one more ignition. We could always use the ant engines to do the final rendezvous burns and everything. Uh, they have enough Delta V with the Oscar refuel tanks, but it's better to not do that, I think. Well, I'm certainly glad I'm not doing connected living space with this. Okay, encounter with a separation of 3.3 kilometers right there. Oh, that trail off was really horrible. Okay, but that's it for that engine. There's no reason to keep that. We'll have a bit of space junk here though. Undock. Alright, so yeah, that'll be a bit of space junk. Here we're controlling from here. Doesn't really matter which side we control from, but it'll be better for the ant engines if we decide to use them. Okay, we're gonna be on the nighttime side. We still have all the electric 
all the electric charge, so it shouldn't be a problem. I didn't really have any way of bringing back the engine or something like that. That'll be a later sort of thing to do. Maybe we can fix it, I don't know. I think they said we could fix it, right? We could still fix it. I don't know if Bill is up to that. We'd probably need a repair kit though, I didn't send one up. The station's out of power, so we can't get it to turn towards us. Not that we should rely on that anyway. Okay, we have docked. No more electric charging currents. Well, now there is. Okay, we'll definitely have to put more batteries on. But let's get into daylight first. Okay, we are in daylight. Let me just use ship manifest to transfer our scientist over into the mobile processing lab. Bob, hopefully we'll have something to do eventually. I haven't got the science in. I should have put some science on the pods, but I didn't. We'll get there eventually. Okay, so Bob will be there and we'll also test the life support. And Jeb I want back down. We'll send Dude bus over. We'll bring Jeb and Bill back. So Dude bus can be in the hitchhiker storage container. And then in one of the pods we'll have Jeb and Bill. And they'll return immediately. Okay. So that's the theory. Now, let's get Bill out and see which one... Oh, uh, yeah, Bill. We've got Jeb, Bill, and Bob all in the same mission. That's pretty rare, too. Okay, so yes, it is that pod, and what we want to do is add all the batteries. Just gonna move it along. Let's you zap that. He's not moving very fast for some reason. I don't quite understand that. Yeah, something's gone wrong with him moving. Well, let me disengage and re-engage the RCS. Yeah, he's not moving normally. Uh, this is a dangerous situation. I can't move him forward yeah I'm, I'm using a lot of thruster power to try to move him forward but it's not working uh see yeah it's not working sideways It, it, it doesn't want to move him over to this side. Let me go to the tracking station and come back to see if there's a problem that can be resolved like that. Somehow bringing up the engineer panel limited the RCS capabilities and it didn't return to normal or something like that. Okay, now he's moving normally. Okay. Uh, but we used a lot of mod propellant to not be moving. Okay, let me see. Let's get out of that mode and see. Yeah, he's got a moving problem again. Well, to the tracking station. Uh, I'd like to put those onto the station properly. No, I don't want to abandon the mission. What are you talking about? Um, tracking station. So this is a weird sort of glitch. Okay, well, again, it's okay once we're in this mode. Let me try and get the batteries over. Okay. I don't know if 
You can reach over here, apparently. Well, I guess he attached that without doing the little laser blast board. Doesn't seem to be floating free. Okay, so we've moved those. Now there's a lot less electric charge on this pod, but we just need to come straight back down. And it's got its food, water, and oxygen, so we're gonna transfer the food, water, and oxygen from these pods over here. So that's not wasted. Uh, I just had a camera change for some reason. We're not in some weird orbit, are we? We are in some weird orbit. Why? What happened? What? Uh-oh, we've got glitchiness. We've got glitchiness. No, wait. What? No, no abandoned mission. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um... No objects nearby. Uh, guys, we've got a huge radial component. There's glitchiness. Um, tracking station. It will be lost. Okay, hold on. We're gonna decouple the end pod and see if that helps anything. Unduck. God, that just dropped away like crazy. Um, uh, I'm gonna ignite the bobcat. Engine malfunctioned. <laughs> They're both malfunctioning now. Okay, did we get the contract fulfilled? It seems that way. It's no longer in our thing. Okay, we're abandoning the station. We've got so many problems. I thought playing JNSQ was gotta be a nice, calm sort of thing. Well, yeah, I don't know what to do but to abandon the station. I'm not even gonna transfer resources right now. I mean, look at how they go. Okay, now, if we go to tracking station, it'll abandon this mission, right? What if I go to this. This is now in a, uh, now it's not doing any weird stuff. I'm just gonna get them into a stable orbit for a sec. That was all the station's madness. Um, let's point radially so that we can control that apoapsis. We don't want this to get too high. That's also a problem. After all, if it's too high, it could get too hot for it to return, and that's another glitch I've been having. Apparently, that's not what happens with our other people. Okay, well, I'm a little bit nervous about how much fuel we're using there. I'll uh, use some of the RCS. The other one should also be on the upward trend, hopefully, and not on a downward side. I go, that's that. This is Bob and Dudebus. This is still going weird, but it's periapsis ended up higher for some reason. I really want to check on Jeb and Bill. Okay, they are on the upward swing. Also, oh, not as high at apoapsis. Oh, uh, we had an engine mal malfunction. How many engine malfunctions have we had, by the way? Fortunately, the reaction wheel is good enough to control it with just one of the ant engines working, and they're sort of tilted, you'll notice. I somewhat anticipated this. Okay, well, that's that's in orbit right now. We'll hop back to the other one, bring that one down first, and then bring this one down. This was, I mean, at least we got the contract fulfilled, but boy. <laughs> this is not making me feel much better about this install than already. Maybe I should just redo the install completely. 
Anybody have any idea? I put my mod list in the video description. Is there anything I ought to delete? <laughs> I mean, I'm willing to get rid of anything to make this work out. Maybe, it, I mean, do you suppose it's Kerbalism? But would that really make the engineering? Because I'm pretty sure it was the engineering thing when we placed the batteries that caused the glitch with the station. Maybe it was just the engineering system, I don't know. I should probably remove KIS so that KIS isn't in here. Since the engineering thing is in here already, you know, with that way of handling it, probably KIS is overdoing it. Well, I mean, I have no idea where we're going to come back down. Oh, this still has its two batteries on, right. That high apoapsis makes me nervous, so I'm going to try and bring that down. Okay, that's that for the ant engines. And let's rid of the service module. Oh! <gasps> Why did it come back at us? Oh, this is so. Maybe I should. Oh, whatever. <laughs> There's so many things going wrong, I can't even keep track. Okay, whatever, as long as we're not dead. I don't feel any better about bringing them back into the atmosphere, but we have no choice. Okay, those don't actually retract those little mini solar panels, so and they're broken anyway. But yeah, they'll they'll burn off. Hopefully, not causing any further problems. But as soon as I try to turn it, it wiggles all over the place. It's using a bit of yaw. The panels are a bit imbalanced, they're sort of off the side and that's because of the RCS thrusters and not wanting to block the hatch or something. We're sort of deviating from retrograde but I don't want to mess with it because when I messed with it, it wiggled around a huge amount. And this attitude is not a problem problem. The soul panels have still survived, somehow. Okay, down to regular Kerbin re-entry velocities in normal scale. And despite the weird attitude, we seem to have survived. Okay, parachute deployment. Okay, and recover vessel before it sinks or something. I'm surprised it allowed me to recover vessel when it was still going 1.2 meters per second according to the thing down there. Okay, we've got another two to bring down. I don't want to lose any kerbals today. And then we'll take a look at the station's condition. It may be in orbit, it may not be in orbit, who knows? But it is not our primary consideration right now. Uh, my guess is it's not still in orbit since it's no longer in this list. Okay. Okay. And getting rid of the service module. Oh, it did the same thing. Uh, they seem to like be decoupling into it like they're reversed, but... That wasn't happening. I, I just took the previous service module off and put the Oscar B on. But yeah, there's definitely something weird going on there. I don't think Oscar B fuel tank service modules should be used in the future. They're convenient though and we sure don't need extra you know, uh, fuel. We don't need any more fuel than an Oscar B fuel tank. That's the problem. Oh, and actually Jeb can hold retro. Okay, we're in it now. Well, Jeb's doing a fine job of holding retrograde. I mean, if it was the little service modules, which certainly have a problem because they keep exploding and going into the pod, uh, but then that doesn't explain why the stations seem to have the issue and when we separated from it, it uh, these pods were okay. They were in stable orbits and not going crazy. It seemed to be when I placed the 
battery onto the station when I placed it across the station, uh, uh, sort of across the body from Bill. When I did that, it started having an issue. But then Bill had an issue too with his uh, EVA pack. He couldn't move forward and wasn't moving properly unless I went to the tracking station and came back. So maybe it was Bill. Maybe it was Bill's fault. This is all very complicated though. Okay, recover. Yeah, very complicated. Many possibilities, all bad. <laughs> all bad. Anyway, the important thing is nobody perished. Zero funds. Oh wow, we, we went all the way to the opposite side and got nothing for recovering them. Great. Well, at least we recovered them. That doesn't seem like our money has gone up very much. Yeah, actually the station contract and the crew contract here probably didn't pay... I mean, maybe barely paid for the effort. It was probably a wash. Maybe follow-up contracts will help out. But really, they're not actually giving me the follow-up uh, contracts because, well, we don't have a station anymore. <laughs> right? Uh, what what happens now when we don't even have the station? It's reading that as a station. Uh, you know, it's expecting that station to be there uh, to do these things. Do a supply run to a station. Yeah, but the station isn't there. So is it going to be happy with another station being there? Should we even launch another station considering what happened to the previous one? They were expensive after all. Ah... Uh... Okay, well, this is the situation, folks, and I'll leave it here for now and see what you think. And for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.